What's up, everybody? I'm Exhibit, it's Cousin, and welcome to Pimp My Trading Card. Yeah, here at Pimp My Trading Card, we specialize in taking unplayable 2002 vanillas and making them top tier metagame threats. Remember this guy? Well, here's how he looked when he walked into our studio. But today, we've got our greatest challenge yet. Show me! Crap. Good afternoon, Jank Enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. It's been a while since I've last sat down and given you the sad information that the newest archetype you're prepared to sink your money into is garbage, but can you blame me? Product releases are fewer and farther between, I'm much more busy than I've ever been before, and I also ran out of adjectives to describe unplayable archetypes. But worry not, I've just gotten a thesaurus and I am ready to tell you all about these... salacious... slip... shod... shitters, the Starry Knights. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I promise the next 10 minute testing won't take two weeks to get out. So here's the list and... God, this is a deck that would have brought down the house in 2011. Now I stare at a list full of reasonable, normal, summonable monsters, and I think to myself, how the hell does this out Eldlich? As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Chalice Slime monthly deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. So with that, let's go into Starry Night. Starry Night is the Sayaryu retrain, and I cannot believe I am saying that. We are... Really ringing blood from the Stone of DM, just shooting blanks at this point. The original Sayaryu was a normal monster with one line of text. A mystical dragon that burns away the unworthy with its mystic flames. Really. One line. Couldn't think of two different adjectives. That is... lazy. And more than that, it's lazy. Anyway, from Mystical Dragon, they inferred a vaguely religious group of fairies and servant of the shiny version of its previous self. The gameplay is straight out of 2011. There's two decent normal summons, one of which adds a spell or trap, and the other of which you can tag out for your boss monster. From the hand... Over the course of the game, you're aiming to cycle your dragon from the hand to the field, procking its on-summon pop as many times as you're able, and hoping your opponent is too dumbfounded by the fact that Sayaryu got a retrain to do anything in response. Unfortunately, this just doesn't cut it in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Today's duelists have no respect for the classics. Summon a 1700 attack monster and pass. They're able to set up eight negates with six different flavors of waifu bait. To combat this, we are... kinda gonna have to commit a war crime. Hey, don't give me that look. As the CIA once said, slightly inconvenient times call for desperate measures. Our check back to the bullshit people are playing is Ties of the Brethren. We don't really need to summon every Starry Knight, but we can also get the Light Barrier statue, which is good against every deck not named Eldlich. Hopefully that will be enough to beat back the hordes of Dragon Link players, but I'm not optimistic. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, Starry Knight, Starry Dragon, which can pop a card on summon and banish its attack target until the end phase like Galaxy Eyes can. Next, three Rael, which adds a spell or trap to your hand, three Astel, who can tag out for Starry Dragon and give it a thousand attack, and one a piece of Seal and Flamel. Don't, um, don't worry about these ones. They're terrible. After that, we're on a Light Barrier statue and three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. For spells, we're on three Ties, three Prosperity, three Droplet, three Bellfire, which searches a monster, three Nativity, which kind of searches the dragon, one Sky, which draws you additional cards and gives you another normal for your garbage monsters, an Upstart, and a Called By. For traps, we're on three Infip, three Advent, and a Blast. In the extra, we're on a bunch of garbage we are never going to summon. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Super Quants. This is a deck that always seemed particularly broken, but never accomplished anything other than being a side engine in 2016 Extra Deck Monarchs. Don't worry, you powerful rangers. Someday you'll be playable. 
Unfortunately, that's not going to be today. Our hand is fantastic. We're going to lead with a copy of Rael and activate its effect to get Advent to hand. Next, we're going to fire off this copy of Ties of the Brethren and summon from our deck a copy of Seal and a copy of Barrier Statue of the Heavens. From here, we can activate Bellfire. The last thing we're missing is Starry Night, Starry Dragon, so we'll add that to hand, set two, and pass back to our opponent. Our opponent's going to start with a copy of Pot of Desires, and this might be a little premature, but I always like getting that two-for-one off of an Ash Blossom. They're going to normal summon a blue layer and activate its effect. They'll get the field spell to hand, and I'm shocked to see summon a white layer from hand. Did you know this was light? I didn't. They're going to get a white to hand and then activate the white in graveyard in order to get another. They'll activate the field spell and we'll activate advent, summoning this starry knight, starry dragon, and activating its effect to pop the blue layer. Blue layer triggers, and then afterwards they're able to fire the effect of the field spell directly into blast, which we will use to destroy it. They'll pass turn, and wow, we didn't even need to protect our barrier statue. We'll activate advent again and then use the effect of starry knight, starry dragon to pop the white. White will trigger, but it's not getting them much. We'll switch our monsters to attack position and Pretty embarrassing that we can't kill them from here, but uh, we've kind of locked it up regardless. We're going to pass it back to our opponent. They will summon a copy of Super Quantal Fairy Alphan, set a Cold by the Grave, and concede. So that's what the deck is supposed to do. Here's what happens if it plays against something just a little bit more competent. Our opponent's on Bird Up, and this is a pretty good open for us. We're going to lead with a copy of Pot of Prosperity, and it kind of has to go our way. We find a bunch of stuff, but unfortunately I have to take the Rael. As much as I want to add the Ties of the Brethren to the hand, we do not have a monster. We're going to normal summon this copy of Rael and activate the effect, walking into a Gamma. Yeah, we have to Ash this. It's not like we're going to activate any more monster effects anyway. We'll add a copy of Bellfire to hand, then fire off the Bellfire in order to get Starry Knight, Starry Dragon, before we're setting Sky, two cards, and passing it back to our opponent. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Turquoise Warbler, and this is kind of a best-case scenario for us. That's not Cobalt, so they're going to go into Recital Starling, and before the Ignition effect can be activated, we'll activate Advent, summoning this copy of Starry Night, Starry Dragon, and triggering its effect to eat the Starling. Pretty good. Then they followed up with Kit. They're going to go for two for Harpy Conductor. God, this is so greedy from them. They're going to send a Rendezvous to the graveyard, then fire off the Tanky for a copy of Fractal before proceeding to End Phase and activating Simorg. We can negate it here, but we can't destroy the Simorg on the follow-up because, unfortunately, that card in the graveyard protects it from battle. As a result, we'll have to banish it with our Starry Knight, Starry Dragon and get in for a fair amount of damage, but unfortunately, nothing close to lethal. We're going to use Advent to put this back in hand and then activate the effect of Sky to draw a card. The card we draw is another summonable monster, so we'll use our extra normal on it and go into an Abyss Dweller, which we can use on our opponent's turn to prevent them from activating card effects in the graveyard, but unfortunately, which matches up very poorly against the Simorg that returns. We can't actually out a barrier statue, and as a result, we're going to concede. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing Virtual World, and oh, god, <sighs> all right, you were right, comments. I know you were already furiously typing it. We should not have been playing Upstart Goblin in a deck with Pot of Prosperity. We're going to fire off a Pot of Prosperity and find something off the top. Unfortunately, we need both Starry Knight, Starry Dragon, and a monster, which is pretty much impossible to get off of one card. We do find a copy of Bellfire, so we'll fire that off and get ourselves, I suppose, the best summonable monster we can, Rael. We'll trigger the effect of Rael to get Advent for a future turn, I suppose, then Ties of the Brethren into a copy of Astel and a copy of Barrier Statue of the Heavens. We're going to set two cards and pass back to our opponent, who draws another Phantasme. They'll activate Qinglong, which unfortunately outs Barrier Statue on its own, then followed up with another card that does so, Nyan Yan. In main phase 2, they'll activate ZC's effect, targeting Nyan Yan and sending a copy of Qinglong to the graveyard, which they will then activate. So they can activate from hand the effect of Lulu, sending a copy of Chuche, and then Synchro summoning a Vermilion Dragon Mech. We are forced to infip here. We do get it in the same column, and they'll activate Lao Lao from hand, to which I respond, we negated that card, what the hell? They're going to bring back the Nyan Yan and then activate Chuche in order to modulate the level of that Nyan Yan so they can go into a Zulkin. They're going to set one card and then summon a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon before firing off the set card, which is a Pot of Prosperity. They do it for three and find, oh god, a Lili. They're going to activate the effect of Lili, targeting the Qinglong and summoning it from their hand before ending on a Zhang Wu, targeting the Lulu and a Shen Shen. This is as bad as it gets, folks. We drew a called by. We'll fire off the Pot of Prosperity first. Don't care about our extra deck, so six is fine, and... Ah, you have got to be kidding me. No way to get to the dragon! Okay, we're gonna go for Ties of the Brethren here. We at least get a couple more blockers. We're not dead, but we're pretty much in a position where we can't possibly win. We're going to set a copy of Called by the Grave. They draw another settable spell. There goes the Zulkin, a second Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. Talk about insult to injury. They'll go to the battle phase here and walk over our entire board. We gotta draw something crazy off the top, but at minimum, we'll have two shots at it because that upstart goblin is finally online! <sighs> Okay, let's go to game two. So it's time for game two, and what if... Hear me out. 
We make our combo opponent go first. They're going to lead with a copy of ZC and follow it up with a Lulu. Next, they're going to send a copy of, ooh, Chinglong to the graveyard. I imagine that'll ditch one of the useless Nibirus in the hand or, or Chuche, sure. They'll activate Lili in order to send a Chinglong and a Jeanwood to the graveyard before activating Chuche. That gets the level modulation necessary to make a Zulkin. They'll activate the effect of Zulkin for a Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon before activating Jeanwood to bring back this copy of Lulu. And oh my god, Mud Dragon into Dragoon. Jesus Christ. Okay, well, maybe we can do this. We're going to lead with a copy of Pot of Prosperity. We'll find off the top. Oh. Yeah, that will do it. We're going to fire off this copy of Forbidden Droplet. Has to do it in the worst possible way. Ditching two cards from our hand, and then we'll activate Bellfire. Ooh, summoning a Sayaryu. Remember, if our opponent controls a Dark-type monster, we can summon it for free from hand. And they did. Our opponent draws a third Nibiru. Useless. But they do have a Chinglong in Graveyard, so they can go for a 2-2 and pass. All right, shields are down. This might be our only turn to get in. And we will get in for 3,000. Our opponent draws a copy of Kaloon. God. They're going to set a copy of Chuche and then activate Chuche to destroy our Starry Night Star Dragon, sending it to the graveyard, then normal summoning a copy of Tutu. And the Tutu beats are online. Can we actually beat this? We draw for turn. It's Ash Blossom. Come on. We'll activate Rail's effect and summon from graveyard the Astel. At least it's a 2,000 defense body, but summoning Clayman is never where you want to be. We can Ash this Lao Lao, but this is pretty bad news. It means we have exactly one turn to do this. They'll Talents, but we have Infip in the same column, so they're not going to be able to draw any cards. They'll Chuche to destroy our last remaining monster and get in for 1200, but now they have no more Chuche activations. Please, just anything here. A Rael or something. <sighs> Nativity is not something. We'll activate Rael's graveyard effect, bring back Astel, and prepare for the worst. Our opponent draws for turn, and then activates Lao Lao. We have no response. They're able to send a copy of Qinglong to the graveyard. They can activate that in order to pitch one of the useless hand traps in their hand before activating Lulu, targeting the Chuche, the best possible target, and getting a copy of Lao Lao to hand. They'll go into a Shen Shen and a Utopia Beyond. Come on! They'll attack with the Utopia Beyond, dealing 3,000 to us, and then in main phase two, they will overlay for a Zeus. Pretty much nothing in our deck outs this. We draw something that is laughably insufficient. They'll Zeus, we'll called, and we will pass our turn. In draw phase, I figure, yeah, no reason to drag it out. Let's just concede. So we're back with the deck, and uh, it's bad. Uh, this one is almost shockingly bad. Like, I'm, I'm a little confused as to why they were printed exactly. These really only make sense if you were in a coma for the last decade of card design. In any case, let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, they're a Cinderella story, in a way. If you feel like you're downwardly mobile useless, pathetic, and the IRL equivalent of a 7-star vanilla, don't worry, you might be retrained soon. Two, they do something cool, I guess. Uh, popping the dragon in and out is... neat. And three, they're at least the third least offensive thing about ghosts from the past. And the cons. One, they are seriously designed to play like normal summon a 1700 monster pass. That does not cut it, and it has not cut it since forever. Two, they have no adaptability whatsoever. You have exactly one game plan, and if you deviate from it at all, you have no ability to claw your way back into the game. And three, they cannot even rebuild. This is... I I, I don't know why, but this is the most ridiculous part to me. a has been in the game for four years. Just give a deck a recursive loop, man. All in all, I, I look forward to playing this in Duel Links, where it was obviously designed for. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons, including Dominic Ernst, Hakuo, AJBYGO, Alex Perea, BB Poison, Blue Fan Fiction Inc., Caleb Jossa, Chibi Gohan, Crispy, Dim Sum 05, Frosty, Jack Sack PhD, King Magic Ruler, Knight Mari, Major Rusty, Matt, Mike Carlotti, Phoenix Strix, Rocky Hernandez, Rose Lapine, Sarah Rutledge, Seeker, Space Dandy 1993, Tyler Slacks, New Month. Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Emil Elefandi, Alex Dominguez, Amaranta V, Andrew Benson, Andrew Ferruia, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Apex TCG, Ball and Stalin, Based Madoka, Bailey Williams, Blake Root, Bleb, Brandon Keys, Candide, Captain Breadbeard, Chad Bortz, Chad Weatherington, Chorps Away, C. Jalex, Cole Shulian, Control for the Win, Crystal Red Fox, Daffy Deathclock, Dan the Man Hoban, Danny Guadalupe, what? You don't have... Ugh. Darcy Taves, Dive Missile, Dogma, Dominic Chris, Doug Parslow, Dr. Batman, Distrin, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Eternal Lamb, Fighting Fangwong, Fisker Whiskers, F-U-T-R, Game of Wolf, Gavin K., 
Oh, different Gavin K. Okay. Hank Cheesecake, Helios the Helios, Haroof, How to Lose, Jose Mina, Ian Kerr, Isaac Jackson, Jane Linya, Jason Leonard, Jay Gordon, Jeff Leonard, Jonathan Wallace, Jupe, Jose Luis Cortez, Joy or John, Juliet Chulian, Callie, Corey Hess, Gurukaze, Lake Bayer, Lawrence, Let Down Bride, Light Sworn Gorgon, Lottie, Lovro Plesse, Lucas Engels, Lucas Girdis, Lucky Number Five, Lucas Arizo Hansen, Major Duncan, Max Meadow Edits, Mezzo Emers, Michael Oskvarik, Miska Aronin, Miyuna Arashi, Mori, Nick Extreme 99, Nero Soup, No Penguin, One Glad Morning, Austrin, Papa Dragonite, Par 2, Picnic Blasted, Precise Bike 13, Pro FP2, Sam Pinney, Sam Soon, Sapphic Ashley, Sean Deal, Standards Objective, Swinkles, Tate Rosencutter, The Gator Boy, The Carl Moxley, The Saucy Pickle, This Machine 237, Thought Auditor, TJ Steakhouse, Yuri's Best, Yuki and Oli Bjarki Aust Fioro. That kind of touch and go there at the end. As always, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.